In this video, we're gonna test this device right here, which is the Autocomb, one of the most famous distribution to in 2024. And we'll see if this Autocomb right here, $200, is it worth the money to spend in your cafe? So stay tuned and let's go. So before the Autocomb came out and became really famous in the World Barista stage, um, we in our little roastery here, cafe front, we've been using this particular tool right here. It's just called the Wedge Coffee Distribution Tool. There are various uh, uh, manufacturers that made it. And so what we've got in here is just a very generic one. It just costs about five to ten dollars, US dollars. And we thought that it did pretty well and does the trick for us. We've paired this with the uh, Malconic E65 GBW coffee grinder, and we felt that it gave us pretty consistent coffee. But in this video, we're gonna test between this two right here, the auto comb, right? The auto comb, and lastly, we're gonna test using this little needle thingy, whatever, this steel thing. It's really hard, it's not like small, right? And we'll see if any of these three if it actually helps in distributing the coffee and ultimately if it helps in giving you the most consistent cup of coffee so stay tuned in this video and let's go so the machine that we'll be using today is this Lama Zogo linear uh, uh, machine linear s classic s we're going to use the uh, malconic gbw 65 S GBW, which actually it weighs the, the, the beans by itself. So if you set 18 grams, it will come out on 18 grams. So we know it's con as consistent as possible. We've already calibrated this right before the video. So we know that we're always getting 18 grams. And we're gonna use this auto tamper here so that the temp will be as consistent as possible. In this video, we're gonna use these tools right here. So we have the dye fluid refractometer, which will measure the extraction or the TDS actually, the total dissolved solids. And we'll do five different tests for all of this, um, for the autocomb first, right? And then we'll test just using this little uh, distribution tool and also this needle here to see if out of these three methods, to see which of them actually gives us the highest extraction and also the most consistent coffee right so our recipe is pretty simple we've already programmed this to come out 36 grams would come out 18 grams would be here and we'll note down the time that it takes for each shot and we'll come back and to see what the results would be let's go okay so let me explain just the steps that we will take so first of all what we will do is we will grind the coffee We'll test five different tests for each of the distribution methods. After that, we will let the espresso cool and measure the results of the TDS in this particular uh, machine here. And then we will note down what the settings would be for each of them. Gone back, tabulated the data between the autocomb, the wedge distributor, and also finally just the non distributor method. And here are the results, right? So, the results it's a little bit surprising, but at the same time, not really, just because people like Lance Hendrick and other YouTubers have been um, making videos and, and showing their data too. And so, we've tabulated our data right here, right? Um, but I put it into an Excel spreadsheet, that way it's easy and simple for us to see. So here are the results. Let's just first look at the auto comb, right? So here you can see it's a table of a auto comb um, with five different samples and we'll split it into the seconds or the time it took and also the total dissolved solids, right? Here are the average. So let's look at just the average for all um, three of them, right? All three of the results. So here you can see the orange is the autocomb, the blue is the wedge distributor, and then the purple is basically no distribution at all. This is showing the total dissolved solids. You can see right here, just the total dissolved solids for no distribution is actually the highest, 9.6% in total distribution. And the lowest, surprisingly, is the autocomb. You know, when we got this number 9.5 on average, we 
we thought to ourselves, maybe something is wrong, right? So we tried to do several samples. We actually did all the way to 10 samples instead. And what we found out is actually the numbers are pretty close. They're always hitting. If you look at it, they're always hitting at about 9.4, 9.3, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, so it shows us that, you know, if you were to compare the autocone, the wedge distributor, and also the uh, no, no distribution at all, I would say that the auto comb actually performs worse, right? Obviously, all this is said without any statistical confidence because it's only five samples per, um, per, per, per method, right? But you can see a pattern right there, right? The same beans is used, the same grinder, the same shot pull, um, and these are our results. So it's pretty surprising. And if you look just further into the data set itself, you can see that um, for the auto comb, it ranges quite a big range too. It went from 9.74, which is the highest, all the way to 9.15, right? In terms of its um, TDS. And you, if we look at even the time itself, right? It's pretty close, 27 to 30 seconds, about three seconds apart, not too bad. But let's look at the wedge distributor. So the wedge distribution method, really high, 9.88 versus the highest of 9.74, right? And you can see the lowest is 9.21 versus a 9.15 on the auto comb. Um, and then um, you just look at the time itself with the wedge distribution. The difference here is from the lowest to the highest is about five seconds apart. But take a look at the time itself. These are all counting in 30 seconds and above uh, shot time. While the auto comb, it, almost all of them, except for one, is below 30 seconds. Not too sure why that's the case, but um, we'll, we'll just present the data as it is, right? And then lastly, let's go to the no distribution method. You can see that it's pretty high. Only one of them here, it's low, right? 9.21 versus 9.8, 9.8, 9.5, 9.6. So the average is about 9.6, right? It's really high in terms of its total TDS. And if you look at the seconds too, most of them, right? Or at least three of them are above 30 seconds. And then the other two is 29 and 28. You can see the shortest shot time is 28. The longest shot time is 32. So about four seconds apart in terms of accuracy. Um, but at the end of the day, you can see that it's even pulling a higher average TDS score of uh, 9.6. So what are your thoughts, guys? I think this shows us that distribution tool only works up to a certain aspect. Our conclusion from this whole test is although the no distribution method works the best, but they're all pretty close to each other. I think distribution tool really, really helps out if you have a grinder that perhaps is not as uh, as good in distributing the, 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 the grinds, meaning your grind would come out very clumpy. When it comes out really, really clumpy, I think using a distribution tool really helps smoothen out and, and make a higher extraction and better consistency. But because we're using the Malconic E65 SGBW, it's already so um, well in its fluffiness and in, in its distribution, even grinding it directly into the porter filter, it already works. So now we're gonna have, now we're having second thoughts too for a commercial setting in a cafe, whether it is, is it worth it to spend the time to use the auto comb or maybe just not having any distribution or just the wedge distribution tool is good enough. Here is our last words, right? If, if you're using for a home and if you have a home grinder that is not the best, buying an auto comb would definitely, or we would think would help you out, right? But if you have the money to buy an auto comb, which costs like $200 or 950 uh, ringgit, you might as well take that money, save a little bit more and buy a better grinder, right? So we would say it's not necessary. Not necessary to use a distribution tool like an auto comb. Um, you, unless your grinder is really bad in terms of its grind quality, then by all means, use it. So that's our conclusion not sure what you think about it we're still processing the data that we've received but what are your thoughts let us know down in the comment section below and we'll see you in the next video bye